What up? What's happening? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And live on the show was the first comedian I had from Cigar City Comedy all the way back in September. And now he is back again in March. Live on Hoppy Hour is comedian Matt Fernandez. What's Woo! up, dude? Yeah! That was the best intro I've ever gotten for anything. Really? Yeah, that was good. I feel like a professional wrestler. And I feel like you're not hungover. Because you admitted to me <laughs> oh, yeah. the, uh, when we were coming up here that you were hungover the last I was, time you uh, did it. I was in Orlando the night before doing Doug Benson's <laughs> podcast, and I slept in a hotel and got drunk. And, you know, when you're on the road, you you just want to drink and not sleep. What's it like partying with Doug Benson? A lot of, a lot of weed. <laughs> Weed everywhere. You seemed very high when I interviewed you, but I guess it was just oh. the hangover. No, it was a, it was a yeah. It was a str- <laughs> I slept for like four hours and I was just completely because it wasn't like I was uh, carrying the conversation, but you just seemed so out of it. I was like, "What's wrong with Matt Fernandez? Is he okay?" <laughs> <laughs> I had just found out I had cancer, uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna pull through, dude. What I like about you too is a lot of comedians are either funny online but not funny in person like the fat Jew or there's a lot of comedians <laughs> that are funny in person but not good with social media what I like about you is you do it both ways dude oh, you're both doing online. it both ways man I do it both ways whenever I can I just <laughs> love doing it both ways <laughs> whatever hole is available I'll do it <laughs> oh thanks man that's cool. how do you come up with what you come up with dude it's brilliant uh a lot of it is just the, I mean this whole election, it's been nothing but one big, giant, shit pot full of jokes. I mean, if you can't come up with anything, you're, you should quit comedy. But, yeah, it's just, you know, the news. I try Dude, to I'm stick scared, to the news. man. I don't like where we're going at all. It's It's been fun to watch, though. Like, as a, my comedian brain is like, yeah, let's ruin the Donald Trump for president. Let's do it. What is your comedian brain like? Because I hung out with John Jacobs about two nights ago, and, man, his brain is insane. I love it. He is so creative. So what's he yours like? He is like a nine-year-old with ADD. I love John. <laughs> no, I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm nothing like John. I'm, I'm the polar opposite of John. I just, you are I, very laid back. Yeah, I am really laid back. You I don't sort of look talk like Action Bronson, the rapper. Oh, thanks, man. I'm, I'm a little taller, but, yeah, I get that a lot. You have a very laid back vibe about you, which is why I think you do well in comedy, is a lot of comedians go up there, and they think they have to be hyper. Yeah. Now, everybody no. from Cigar City Comedy, everyone's so different that it works. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have David Weingarten, you have Krishna Reddy, you have Matt Fernandez. Yeah. Everybody's so much different, which is what I like about you guys. But what I like about you is you just go up there and just do your thing. You're not trying to overcompensate. No, I'm not like a character or anything. I just, I'm just kind of myself on stage most of the time. What do you think of comedians like that that are characters? Oh, I, I mean, if if, you, if it's funny, I don't. I'm not here to judge. Funny's no, but funny. I think sometimes they overcompensate. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, if your if your writing is good, I think that's what I would listen to the most. So, I mean, if you want to be colorful, that's cool as long as the jokes are quality. It doesn't really matter. How does way. a comedian come up with a good joke? Do you smoke weed and lay back? Because <laughs> I can't come up with anything. All There's... I do is talk into this mic and interview people and rant about the news. I want to be more creative. I'm not saying I want to become a comedian, but how do you think of creative things? Because, dude, I really like your Twitter account. Yeah, I, yeah, I smoke weed. and <laughs> <laughs> No, and then I just kind of, not all the time, but I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for that. It's just, you know, if you is it look just at something where it just long comes enough to and think mind? about it. Sometimes, but sometimes I sit there and I'll think about you know, really think about it for a good 10 minutes. Because usually I think the first thing you think of is going to be dog shit. Or and then you just have to realize, no, that one's dog shit. And then we like search even deeper, try to find the next joke. Well, what I've been doing is if I have a thought or a thing I want to rant about, I make sure it's not been done on Google because I put up a post saying Jeb Bush is the Cooper Manning of the Manning family. And I'm not going to say the comedian's name, but he's semi big. He's like a B list comedian. And he is goes, he local? No, but you would know who he is. Oh, okay. He goes, you're taking my joke, basically, in capital letters on my post. Um, I'm going to tell you that I don't even know who Cooper Manning is. That's the brother of Peyton. Do you watch sports? Oh, okay. Oh, shit, the unknown Manning. All yeah. right. I don't. I didn't even know his exactly. name. Exactly. I know Peyton and Eli. I didn't even know that guy had a name. my point was you have two successful people with the same last name. <laughs> the so you have Manning. George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush who are <laughs> successful. And then you have Cooper Manning who's Jeb Bush. All right. Bomb. All right. And I was proud of that. And he's saying I took his comedy. It's like, screw you. Yeah, I don't think that that's such a, like, if you know who Cooper Manning is, which I did not, That's I think that's funny, but. 
Like that, I'm sure that's been done more than once. And I've looked it up on Twitter. It's been done a lot. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> so it's, what is the key good. to coming up with comedy that's original? Because I feel like if I were to be a comedian, it'd be very hard for me to be original. I just try to not sound like anyone. Don't listen to anybody else's comedy while you're trying to write, I think. Because yeah, you'll, you'll end way. up sounding like that person or you'll take a you might take something you heard from that person and put it in. I think you just have to have your own voice. I'm the same way. I don't listen to radio on the way to doing my show. In the morning, I listen to Howard or Opie and Jimmy or Calta. But before I do a show, I never listen to the show because I don't want to take any of their mannerisms yeah. or any of their uh, traits as what do you, a person. What do you think about uh, Opie and Jimmy? Do you like it? Do you oh, prefer- I love it. Do you? Okay. The thing with Opie and Anthony was it was so electric. They bounced off each other that it was such hyper radio. But what I like about Opie and Jimmy, because I subscribe to both them and Anthony, mm-hmm. is Opie and Jimmy really do well with talking to comics. It's not like fake banter where the comics give them their jokes and then they make them say it. It's just like a bunch of people talking at the bar, which is why I try to take that approach with local Tampa comics. Yeah, you guys are so easy to talk to. You're paid to talk and make jokes. I hopefully someday will be paid to talk to comedians, so that's what I'm trying to accomplish. You're doing great so far. <laughs> Thank you, man. Dude, Tampa Bay has some legit comedians. Everyone talks about Nashville or Los Angeles or Chicago or Who New talks York. about Nashville? Well, I know there's the uh, comedy club there, Zanies. I feel like there would be a good scene in Nashville. Huh. I've only been there once. Uh, maybe. I don't know. But, yes, definitely the other ones, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago. Dude, some of the best comedians came from New York. Yeah. Uh, Who are some comedians you like that influenced you? Oh, that's a that's a long list. I don't even know where to start. I love Mitch Hedberg. I like Patrice O'Neill. I like Anthony Jeselnik. There's a, I could go on forever. There's like a lot Dude, of good Mitch comedy. Hedberg's a legend. Yeah, he was the first comic I really like heard and was like, oh, you don't have to do it this way. You can do yeah. it this other way. And it, you know, it was really cool to hear that. How far has your comedy come over the years? Huh. Wait, like I don't, I don't do any of the jokes that I did my first year. I think all of those are in the garbage. Were they all hacky? No, they were just not me. Like they're not who I like. They were all stupid, dirty jokes. Like I don't, I'm not really like a dirty comic. So I threw, you know, I knew that. I just what type of comedy over. do you do for people that haven't seen you? What's your approach? Uh, f- uh, uh offensive but not dirty. Like yes, I, because I like, I like line, to divide the room if I can. I've never seen you post the F word. You do it in a clean way while being dirty. Like, you'll talk yeah. about people in porn, but you keep it clean. Oh, thanks for noticing, man. <laughs> yes, I, I don't know. I just, if you don't have to cuss, then you don't really need to. But if you do do it, you know, in your set, that way it's that much stronger. There are some comedians that cuss gracefully. It's very bizarre. Yeah, of course. I think if you cuss once or twice, it gives the word more power because you're only, you're not... You don't have to say fuck every 10 minutes, but when you say it once every half an hour, it, it, it'll hit. It'll make it a Nothing like when you go to an open mic and there's the guy who's like, yeah, I fucked that bitch. And then what happened was after I fucked her, I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, don't say it, I don't man. go to open mics anymore because I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> Dude, I just, uh, it's the worst. Open mics are painful. They are. They're hard to watch. But for me, not being in comedy, I love watching it just because I like to scout out the area. I'm trying to figure out which you go to, open to get on. I went to uh, the one at James Joyce for John oh, Jacobs. Oh, John Jacobs, yeah. Dude, it kind of had the vibe of like a Tim and Eric skit or something from Adult Swim. There was this guy named Randy. I don't know if you've heard Randy of Randy Holton. I Hell, love that I man. I love Randy Holton. <laughs> he's, he's the best comic in this city, probably in the country. Dude. <laughs> Dude, Randy is the man. He goes up there, and he's talking about his favorite bells. He's like, there's a school bell, there's a cow bell, there's the doorbell. <laughs> it was amazing. Yep, that sounds like a Randy bit. How does he approach comedy? Like, have you ever talked to that dude before? Randy? I have no idea. I think he might be clinically insane. I've never <laughs> talked to him for more than like five seconds. He's cool. I mean, he's a nice guy. He's been doing it. Jesus, he's been doing it forever. Ever since he, he was doing it before I started. And uh, yeah, he has always done dumb, dumb jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I love too is they're so simple minded and innocent. Yeah. There's just such an innocence to his comedy. Like the dude that was on before and on after, they're talking about blowjobs and sex, and he's talking about his favorite. <laughs> Bells. <laughs> oh, he has 
He has jokes like that too. He I know he has a joke where he talks about going to jail and putting glass in his butthole so no one rapes him. <laughs> shark shark tooth butthole, I think it's called. But yeah, I don't I I haven't talked to him enough privately to know whether or not he's smart or an idiot. I loved watching John Jacobs interact with him. It was the funniest oh, thing ever. <laughs> I I love John. Me and him have had some uh, some great times together. The first time uh, I broke up with my girlfriend, I went to his house, and we shot fireworks off of his balcony, and he lived right by Bayshore, so essentially we were just firing fireworks into the street, and then we threw them into this courtyard and ran to Beef O'Brady's because we thought the cops were going to come. And yeah, it, it John Jacobs time. seems very reckless. I mean, he put up yeah. a picture of a warrant he has. I was yeah. like, you, did you see that? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> he's a special guy. He wasn't on Facebook for a long time. I'm glad he's back. It's only a matter of time before he ruins his life. What I love, too, is he just has the funniest approach to him being on MTV. I love hearing about it. <laughs> just the funniest things that happened there. I, I've never really talked to him about that. Oh, he will open up. If you talk to him in the right way, he will tell you everything about MTV. <laughs> he, uh, I think he told me about being on the challenge a little bit, but we did couch talk. But no, I haven't really. I, to me, he'll always just be John. Like we started together, and we the first, we hosted our first open mics together. Like we did the, I hosted the first half of an open mic. He hosted the second half. That was like our first paid show. The Tampa Bay comedy scene seems very tight knit. I guess, yeah, probably. The good comics, anyway. Yeah. How many bad comics are there in Tampa? There's no number for it. It's infinite. They're forever. They never, ever, ever, ever end. Dude, I feel bad, man, but, like, a lot of people have been approaching me about coming on the show, so I look up their name online, and I'm like, <laughs> like That's how I am when I hear their sets. Just, and I don't want to act like I'm not too or that I'm too cool for anybody because I'm not. You are too cool for them. It's okay, man. You should tell them that. No, it's just you're not funny. It's just <laughs> how am I supposed to make that work? Like, they're doing BJ jokes that aren't original, and you just feel the pain of watching the YouTube video, and you're like, you should, I you appreciate <laughs> you listening, but. You're the worst. There was this one comic that approached me. I don't know if you've seen him. He brings a sex doll on there oh, at side splitters have you seen him i gotta get out of the city no <laughs> he messages me with the worst grammar he's like yo i'm truck driver but in free time i do comedy he said his name is truck driver he said i'm a truck driver <laughs> oh, i'm, I'm a not gonna say the driver. name <laughs> and he's like i've done comedy with camp bertrand and jared water <laughs> so i send a text to jared <laughs> And Jared never heard of him. <laughs> and he had no mutual friends with anybody. And Those are his with... credits. He worked with Cam Bertrand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another adorable comic. What do you think of Cam? I think he's adorable. Didn't you hear me? I think he's the cutest little thing. I think he's someone to look out for. He's got <laughs> no, so he's, much he's, inspiration. He's trying his hardest. <laughs> were you like that when you were younger? What? Like an urban white kid? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, he has his own thing. I, I, like, I think he's funny. I love. Ken. I love how he does it, just because his voice is amazing. I, he, his voice does not go to his face. I've always said him and Jared Waters should trade voices. They, they have each other's voices. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> he just has that like twang to him, that like southern twang that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, if you want to call it that, amazing. I don't know if I'd choose that word. It's kind of like Chris Rock. Yeah, he sounds. That's who. He, yeah, everyone tells him he sounds like Chris Rock. He does. But his comedy is good. I saw him do improv at the uh, Crumpled Napkin two months ago with Law Smith. Oh yeah, and he was funny. They had him talk about mom porn, and he just went <laughs> off for two minutes, and uh, he was decent. Oh, uh, I was supposed to be on that show, but I was uh, I was out of town. I was doing shows in Seattle, and uh, what's that like? Oh, it was, it was cool, man. It was great uh like i was kind of worried because supposedly people there are so liberal but they took right to the dirty fucking offensive horrible jokes what's a city that doesn't take the jokes i had, haven't found one yet really <laughs> i'll let you know if you're funny i don't think it matters are most towns cool yeah, it, yeah i mean if i've most of the towns i've been to besides 
maybe like Mobile, Alabama. But yeah, most places. Well, are that cool. does sound like a place that yeah. wouldn't embrace their comedy. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a fun show. But you know, what was it like in Mobile, Alabama? Like, was, what was the surrounding area outside of the it was club? M- like, just covered. There were cigarette butts all over Alabama. They were just <laughs> everywhere. I think it, they're just oh, they're everywhere. But no, did it, it just reek of like menthol just, cigarettes? There's there's no Uber. That's the one city I've been to that doesn't have Uber. I was blown away. I got off the train and I was like, I'll oh, Uber to the hotel. And nope, no Uber. And not only that, but the taxi that they had waiting for you when you get off the train was just a dirty old brown truck and a piece of cardboard in the windshield that said taxi you're lying no i swear to god it was so scary it's like a weird. it was it was very much <laughs> i was like am i in sudan what is happening <laughs> it was so crazy i never want to go back there what's the scariest town you performed in like mobile a alabama <laughs> like what about baltimore or something like no that? i've never been i haven't done baltimore uh let me think here i've really done a lot of scary towns chicago was i mean chicago is scary based on its reputation, but no, no, it was no, no, cool. No, no, no. How there. dare you? How it was, dare oh, you? Oh, no, it was great. I love Chicago. I, oh, I didn't see anything. Well, I love I it. am so sick of the media making it yeah, out to be I was, completely I was ghetto. waiting for, like, That's one side of town. Violence. It's not like Detroit or no, Cleveland no, where it's a all. dump. I love Chicago. I love Chicago. I was, Dude, it isn't it great? Yeah, I went Deep to, dish pizza's the best. Oh, I'm a huge fan. I was, uh, yeah, I took classes at Second City. I was there for a week. It was great. I loved the whole What is a class like at Second City like? Uh, I took a writing class, so it was kind of just, you know, uh, they tell you about different ways to write, and then they give you, uh, you know, they'll give you assignments. It was basically like a week of school. I was there for six hours a day. Yeah, I haven't taken a radio class in about two years, and it's weird when you sit there and you have people saying things you already know. Did you go through that? So where- a little bit, yeah. It's weird because you want to learn how to do better. Like, I go to these radio conferences, and I learned more at the radio conference than I did at the radio school because we're like, you got to talk into the mic, and you're like, I want to learn, but I'm not learning anything right now, you know? Yeah. No, I think, you know, uh, experience is the best way to learn anything if you do it And if you have talent. You can go to school all you want, but if you have no talent and you have the worst voice or you're not funny, you're screwed. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh yeah, Second City was great. I The first maybe two hours was kind of just like, because I, I had already been studying script writing because I was working, uh, me and J.B. Ball and Law and John Jacobs, we uh, actually shot a pilot a couple of years ago that uh, never had, nothing ever happened with it, but uh, I learned all about script out? writing. Yeah, yeah, we, we, were, uh, we got funded, we had mics and cameras and everything, but uh, nothing ever came out of it. How does that work when you want to make a show? Like, who do you send it out to? Like, were you guys close? Yeah, uh, well... Uh, one of uh, Jamie Kennedy's guys uh, gave us the money to buy stuff, and uh, we sent him the idea. And what was the idea? Pretty much it. It was uh, kind of like a sitcom. It was four guys who all have addictions, and but one of them has to go to. But one of them gets arrested, and he has a sex addiction. He has to go to meetings. Was that so the thing I saw online him. where JB Ball was in a car and somebody approached him? I saw a video. It might have been. It was. I don't think it's online anymore. But uh, it might, I I don't know which video. Were you disappointed when it didn't go through? No. Nah, I mean, it was a great experience. I we ba- the four of us hung out in a room together for you know three or four hours writing, and then we got to hang out all day shooting. And you know, it was fun to hang out with those guys. I love those guys. What's the most successful thing that you've ever done? <sighs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm still waiting to find out. I'm uh. <sighs> Uh, stand up. I mean, is it, can I say that? Yeah. Do you ever feel jaded at all? Or <laughs> no, no, not yet. I'm still. I'm waiting for that. That uh, I hate comedy because I haven't made it yet. But uh, it hasn't hasn't hit me. Do you ever feel like you're not grateful enough, or do you just want to keep on grinding? Because I try to figure out that too. I know I'm younger, so it doesn't really matter. But like, we want success so much because we're so creative that at times it's like you're tired of waiting and you want it right now, you know? Yeah, but I like I like the uh, the build up, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I, I'm getting more now than I ever have, and that's got to lead to something. Of, you know, you just keep getting more and more until eventually you've made it. Would you say you're working the crowd better, which makes the comedy better? Like, what's gotten better over the years? The writing. That's my that's you know that's my favorite thing about doing this. Now, when writing. you write, are you in a room by yourself? Are you watching yeah. TV? What there do you are, do? Like, I've there are writing like writing groups all the time, and I I never want to go because I hate the idea of someone else having their their finger in my stew. I, yeah, like I want to cook it and make it make sure it's my thing. Yeah, but uh, 
Yeah, it's I love writing. It's my favorite thing in the world. Even more than performing, I I love to write. See, I couldn't sit down. I've really been trying to work on coming up with ideas, but I got such an ADHD mind that I always want to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like we're the opposite. I feel like I'm really hyper and I need to do something, and I feel like you're more laid back and you chill. I need to not do anything. I, I love not doing anything. It's my oh, favorite. Oh, dude, I work so hard that I feel like I got to begin not burning out. Like I was talking to Sean Daly outside from HSN, who I just had, and he was basically saying, dude, you got to start doing something on the side. But because you want to make it, you work hard at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You definitely have to make time to make money. Yeah. But then you also want to you know, do what you love. What is the key, though, to finding a social life while working hard? Because I feel like at times... I need to just keep working, and I don't have time for a social life. It's a weird balance. Yeah. I try to make time for everyone in my life. It's tough. I, I'll agree with that. But, you know, this is the job. This is I, I want to do this. I have to do this. Yeah. I mean, have you ever found yourself burning out? Have you ever found a time where you had to just give up for a week or two and relax, or are you doing it at a good pace? I, I try to stay busy, but, you know, I I also am working on a couple other things that I like to take free time on, and then I like to do, you know, I like to travel just for fun, not necessarily to do shows. Where do you travel to? Oh, I'm going to San Francisco in a couple weeks. That's cool. I'm going to Nebraska the week after that. How come? Uh, comedy Festival. They're doing a, it's called Crom Comedy Fest. It's pretty cool. They just got uh, Bobcat Goldthwait to close out one of the shows. So I'm pretty stoked about that. That's going to be fun. Dude, he's funny. He's one of the underrated oh, comics classic. out there. He's all time good. Yeah. Like, when you think of all-time great comics, Bobcat doesn't come to mind all the time, and he should. He'd be, like, top 50. Yeah, dude, he's funny. He's great, yeah. I love Jim Norton. I know people might think I'm saying that because I had him on the show, but, like, he's a very smart mind. Like, I've read articles Jim? he's written. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I love Jim. He's, dude, he's yeah, got, like, you, a brilliant mind. People don't really, to be funny, you have to be somewhat smart. You have to think your way around some things. Yeah, he seems like a guy who always is thinking of new things. Like, mm. he's very smart and on the spot. I like, love that he's smart, but he's also, like, totally disgusting. Oh, I know. I love how <laughs> I read this article by Jim Norton about why getting hookers should be legal, and it was the most inspiring thing I've ever read. Where was that? It was in Time Magazine. Oh, I it was one of the, I'll send you the link. I'll it was one Google of the most <laughs> inspiring things, and you're thinking, this is about paying for sex. But he made it where you go. Oh, my God, it's true. Like, to me, that's a creative mind. When you take something that has no morals, usually, mm -hmm. like getting a hooker, and you make it funny, and you make it where you're rooting for them, that's when you go, that guy's a genius. You know what I mean? A normal comedian could be like, yeah, I picked up a hooker, and I fucked her. But Jim Norton <laughs> talked about it with Jesus class. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Comedians are like that all the time. <laughs> Oh, oh, your comedian voice sounds like a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fucked her. She's dead now. Okay. <laughs> uh, <I have> to, <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> I have the Ted Cruz attitude. <laughs> oh, you're excited. I like it. Ted Cruz is such a weirdo, dude. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God. His face makes my stomach cr cringe. Ugh. It's cre like, I hate him more than Trump because his <laughs> creepy lizard face. Oh, it's gross spider fingers he ate a booger on TV. <laughs> he sure I did can't look at he him sure did same. ryan he ate that booger i saw that live <laughs> i was like what just happened oh it was on his mouth for a good little a good little while <laughs> just hanging out waving at the crowd i love how trump basically just made fun of rubio out of the election <laughs> poor poor marco did you see his exit interview when he's like talking about florida doesn't even like me he goes it was fun while it was there. Oh, little Marco. He looked so sad. He, uh, he, I, I, I wanted to like him because he seems level-headed and he seems young. And, but he's but too much he's, of a bigot. He's, like, he has way too many. Like, he only showed up for work two-thirds of the time. He really? Just, yeah, he was out of office more than any other active uh, I never senator. never knew that. Yeah. He didn't seem very motivated. He seemed lost. Like, there's that clip of him drinking water when his stroke gets all dry. <laughs> he just seemed very awkward and not ready yeah he doesn't have as much like i i think that's why obama was in there for eight years that man i could listen to that he's i could listen to him talk i want him to, i, I want obama. him to narrate things like Obama's a, great yeah, dude. He's, yeah I, I i think he's uh he's personable 
I want to have a beer with Barack Obama. That's the same thing. I would love to just talk to Obama for a night. Yeah. Like, I've already met Opie, so I've met the person that influenced me. Obama's the next person in life I want to meet. Like, Obama just seems like quite the dude to hang out with. Oh, sure. Maybe he's not the best president. I think he's pretty good, but he's up for debate. But he just seems like a really genuine dude. Yeah. He tried to do some things, and maybe they didn't work, but he also did some things that did. He tried. I mean, George Bush didn't do shit. George Bush was a moron. He just, you know, buried us in a war and crashed the housing market and then gave everything to Obama. (laughs) And they were like, oh, okay, here you go. (laughs) What I love, too, is he was on Ellen's show about six months ago. Bush? Yeah. Wow. He was dancing with Ellen, and everyone's cheering for him. And I'm like, this mother effer ruined the country. He can't hurt us anymore. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what has he been up to? What does he do with his days? I don't know. <laughs> he looked so happy. He's like, hey, what up, Alan? <laughs> I was like, you're a piece of oh, dirt, man. Oh, man. How old is he? His 70s. He's up there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's weird, too, to see them getting up in age. Like, Clinton's not young anymore, you know? No, no, not at Bill. all. Bill. George's dad is still alive. I know. That man Nancy is. Reagan just died recently, too. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know she was alive. I thought she was dead. I, I, if you would shown me a picture of five women and said point to nancy reagan i wouldn't have done it i I wouldn't know who she is i don't know what she's done because i think ronald's been dead for like 11 years i don't know what she's done the past decade before she. i can tell you that i'll never forget michelle obama ever she is a mill she is she is a beautiful elegant onyx angel she's sort of like the african-american version of jackie kennedy yeah i'll go with that and for much more sexually attractive (laughs) <laughs> and what I love, too, is everyone ripped on her. Oh, she's all about making healthy food. Oh, and about planting gardens. Oh. Yeah, well, like, yeah, she's a girl. That's how they should be. Vegetables are awesome. Maybe you'll take some healthy shits if you have some kale. Okay? Have you been eating healthy lately? I, tr- I try. I had a I've been today. trying, man. I'm just so lazy. I don't have a lot of time during the day, and I don't have time for meal prep. So it's I like, find myself eating out. I'm like, God damn I'll, it. I'll go through the week and be like, I'll just have salad and chicken all week. And then I'll get to the weekend and I'll yes! get drunk and I'll be like, fucking steak. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just blow everything. I'll just ruin all my hard work and start over the next Isn't week. Isn't it sad yep, when you ruin I, all the hard work? I just stay there in my whole Booze life. Booze does it too. Booze yeah? oh, just yeah. ruins everything. Booze is bad for you, and it makes you eat more shit that's bad for you. Exactly, because then at like three in the morning, you want to get checkers, and then Ugh. you feel good about yourself. But then the next checkers morning, you have a food are over. Amazing! Oh my god, I love their shakes too. Oh really? I haven't had them. I haven't had their shakes, dude. I used to get drunk every weekend in Cleveland when I lived there last year because I lived in Cleveland, mm-hmm. <laughs> essentially, and I would always get rallies, which is the checkers down there. It's the same company. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! It's the best drunk food ever. It's like an orgasm in your mouth. See, I I like, I'll get drunk food, but like when I'm drunk, I also like to bust out like something really good. Like what? Like I, like a pulled pork sandwich, something really intense that no one should eat at three o'clock in the morning. Like I'll get waffle fries and barbecue or something, and it'll be terrible. I love going to Chili's too. Yeah, and just getting there. 20 I like to get meal. drunk at Chili's because it's two for ones, and <laughs> no one can stop you. <laughs> That place is fun, Applebee's. I went there with Cam and Jared Waters back in December. It was quite the conversation. Did Cam drink? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, wait, he actually did drink. Jared's the one that didn't drink. Jared oh, okay. was drinking lemonade, which uh-huh. I admired. Jared seems like the very elegant version of Cigar City Comedy. Jared's our dad, <laughs> which is weird because he's the youngest. <laughs> he is the youngest, right? I, mean, I don't know. It's be out of him and Cam. He's very wise. Like, I didn't know what I was going to get from him when I met him, but that dude knows. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Jared's been in the rap game for 10 years when you talk to him. Like, he, <laughs> I could, that's, an, he's another guy. Like, I could listen to Jared talk. <laughs> yeah, Jared's very unique. Like, he should do his own podcast. I love that he's a kindergarten teacher, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I bet I, he's the coolest kindergarten teacher he has ever. A, he has a very smooth, he sounds like most deaf. Like, I, I, he, I bet he's great. Dad, or like, Nas or something, one Na- of those rappers. Nas. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with Nas. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Jay Z. <laughs> oh, poor Jay. Where do you want to see yourself in five years? Not dead. <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> no, I'm. I don't know. Successful would be nice. What's your version of success? 
Uh, being able to live comfortably off comedy. I'm the same way. Yeah. I just want to make it in radio. I want to be that name that people think of when I think about supporting comedians. Cool. Thanks, you know what man. I mean? Yeah. Because comedians, I feel like sometimes get a bad rap because people go, oh, you want to be a comedian. But a lot of them are funny. And even if you're not a household name, if you're funny, you make for good radio. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I think if you have someone that's interesting and funny, your show's going to be interesting and funny. Like when I had Law Smith on, it was two hours. Damn. Law, well, Law Smith Law is talk. a smart dude. Law's a salesman. He is a genius. Yeah, he's a businessman. He could run like a TED Talk. Jacob, John Jacobs was the same way, too, but it was the <laughs> anti-TED Talk. Yeah, it was yeah. just the frat boy talk. He was like if you threw a five-year-old on stage. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you gave a five-year-old a TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, keep up the good work, man. I love your laid back vibe. I oh, just thanks, love man. how you just approach things. You're very fun to look at. On <laughs> oh, you're pretty media too, man. <laughs> when it comes to your posts, it's just every day I see you and JB Ball because you guys post a lot, and I want to like every post, but I don't want to come off like a weirdo. But, dude, the things that you come up with are very intelligent. I look up to it. Oh, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Well, dude, keep up the good work. Yeah. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out.